Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras, here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. A bomb targeting Israeli construction vehicles has just detonated along the Gaza border. At this time, no Israeli casualties or injuries have been reported. Though no terror group has yet claimed the attack, the army, as always, holds Hamas responsible for any terror in the Strip. Accordingly, Israeli forces have just targeted a number of Hamas military targets within Gaza. The explosive device appears to have been planted sometime during the ongoing March of Return demonstrations. Hamas maintains that this is merely a peaceful sit-in. However, Israel has roundly concluded that the protests are merely a smokescreen for further violence against the Jewish state. The army has faced controversy over its use of force, at times lethal force, in keeping tens of thousands of Palestinians from breaching the border fence. This morning's bombing is in line with the Israeli claim, however, that the protests are merely a publicity stunt to facilitate terror. This explosive took place in the buffer zone that separates Gaza and Israeli territory, but in a region that Israel considers its own. Israeli bulldozers are routinely in the area to maintain the security barrier. Several alleged Israeli criminals in Thailand have just been arrested according to Thai police. The suspects are facing multiple counts of murder and illegal weapons and extortion charges, and they're also believed to have connections to the Israeli mafia in Thailand. The first suspects are Ori Levi and Lior Sa'at, who can be seen in separate videos on Koh Samui Beach, firing what Levi claims to be a BB gun up into the air, at the water, and at a jellyfish. Thai police, however, say that there is plenty of evidence that the weapon is indeed real. The third detainee is Shalom Fima, aka Iko, who is wanted by Israel for threats. Iko also manages a Thai travel agency called Iko Tours, and he's been living in Thailand for 17 years but has now had his permit to stay in Thailand revoked. As for the extortion charges, the suspects can supposedly be seen here taking money from a third Israeli who is unnamed at this time. The Israeli Foreign Affairs Ministry has confirmed the arrests but have not offered any additional comment. Pro-Israel advocate, author, and legal expert Alan Dershowitz is now the latest name being thrown into the ring to possibly defend United States President Trump against the ongoing Mueller probes. Dershowitz met with the president for a private dinner Tuesday night reportedly to discuss Middle East policy. The meet comes just ahead of both Trump's deadline to pull out of the Iranian nuclear agreement and his supposed response to Syrian President Assad's chemical weapons attacks. But recently, many rumors have also been thrown about regarding Dershowitz's taking up Trump's case against the investigations into alleged collusions with Russia. Dershowitz has already been publicly defensive of Trump in the past, and their meeting also comes just a day after the FBI raided the offices of Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen, in relation to the Stormy Daniels affair. Dershowitz has denied in the past that he was even interested in taking up President Trump's defense in the courts. But leading to further speculation that he might be, after the event had ended last night, Washington Post reporter Philip Rucker tweeted that he, quote, just got off the phone with Alan Dershowitz, who was at the White House tonight for dinner with Trump, Kushner, and others. He said he was there to advise on Middle East policy, and asked whether they talked about Russia and Mueller. He said, quote, I'm not going to discuss what I discussed with the president, end quote. Israeli Interior Minister Arya Deri has issued a travel ban against supporters of the BDS movement entering Israel. But despite even a specific statement banning entry to Dublin Mayor Michael Makdonja due to his longtime affiliation with the boycott of Israel, the mayor has just tweeted, I'm in Ramallah. Doncha is a member of the IPSC, or the Ireland-Palestine Solidarity Campaign. The group adheres to a strict boycott of Israeli goods and services in practically all industries, and even offers guides to identify products from Israel, calling for their removal from stores. That's what made it so easy for the immigration authority to recommend Doncha not be allowed into Israel. Dancha had been planning to get to the West Bank to participate in protests and Palestinian solidarity conferences. Unfortunately for the ministry, they had his name misspelled though, so Dancha slipped right through their security. Dancha has since even tweeted, quote, I can confirm I am in Ramallah and preparing for tomorrow's conference, end quote. Israeli authorities have yet to announce how they will handle the situation going forward. Just in time for Holocaust Memorial Day, a Democratic congresswoman has just introduced a bill to boost Holocaust education throughout the United States. If passed, the Never Again Education Act would grant a special fund in the Department of Education to give both public and private school teachers additional tools to increase students' awareness of Hitler's horrific final solution. This bill comes at a critical time in United States history, a time when anti-Semitic incidents as well as overall hate crimes have surged over 50% in the last year. That's why Representative Carolyn Maloney, a Democrat from New York, believes this bill is now more necessary than ever. She's joined by broad bipartisan support from both ends of the political spectrum for this bill. 
Various Holocaust and Zionist organizations have also joined Representative Maloney in presenting the bill to the floor of the House. Most interesting of all, the proposed fund apparently wouldn't cost taxpayers a dime. Instead, money would be collected exclusively from private donors and would be distributed accordingly by the Department of Education. At this time, New York is one of only eight states that require Holocaust education in its curriculum. Though a dozen other states do recommend Holocaust education, many schools in the country often fail to cover the Holocaust in its gruesome detail. Comparatively, in Israel, Holocaust education is not only mandatory in every school, but even visits to the Nazi death camps in Poland are a regular staple of high school. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. <laughs>